Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Disney Cruise Line Show, a Diz Unlimited podcast. I am the captain of this cruise through conversation. I'm Rhino, and joining me today are my co-captains. We've got Dreams Unlimited travel agent Elaine Edwards. Hey, friends. Dreams Unlimited travel agent Chris Vorbeck. Yo-ho. Diz theme park correspondent Chloe Ferreira. Ahoy. And today we're going to be doing a little question and answer uh, section. But before we get into that, I want to remind everybody that this and everything that we do here is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel. They are experts at helping you plan the perfect cruise vacation. When you book with them, it costs you nothing extra on your trip and you help support the channel and all the content that we produce here. And you can receive up to a thousand dollar shipboard credit as well as a cruise gift basket for any cruise that you book through Dreams, not just Disney Cruise Line. That's right. Holy ship, what a deal. Yeah, I used that joke two, two episodes in a row because I think it's funny and I'm going to keep going. Um, like I said, we are going to be doing a question and answer show today. If you're wondering where did these questions come from, well, uh, our very own Dreams Unlimited travel agent, Elaine Edwards, she told me about a Disney Cruise Line Facebook page that we have called DCL Fan Facebook page. And you, I believe, uh, did this. You put some questions out there. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, look at me. Look at me. <laughs> I'm looking at you. I'm looking at you. I'm the captain now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Elaine is going to uh, guide us through this, and she obviously created the questions, and I'm going to politely listen and, and switch and uh, chime in with my own questions that I'm sure I'm going to have a lot of. So, uh, <laughs> Elaine, take us away. Yeah, so if you haven't found us there yet, if you are on Facebook, just search DCL Fan. And you will find us there. It's lots of cruisers talking about Disney Cruise Line. I'm in there every day, and it's a lot of fun. So our first question came from Erin, and she said that she is very familiar with sailing out of Florida, but she's got a Panama Canal cruise coming up out of Texas. Oh, jealous. And she wants to talk about like the pre-cruise experience for coming out of Texas because you've got some different options about airports you're going into, what's going on with transfers, hotel, that kind of thing. So I have not sailed out of Texas before. Have any of you guys sailed out of Texas? I have not sailed out of Texas. Okay, no. we've got have some. Have you sailed out of Texas? I have not, no. Oh, well, we've already hit a road bump. <laughs> however, <laughs> however, our other Dreams Unlimited travel agent on this podcast, Chris, is very well informed, and he actually looked up the answer for us. Yeah, so uh, there are a couple things that you need to think about. The uh, Galveston is a little bit of a distance from, uh, you would fly into Houston, so it's either the George Bush Intercontinental Airport IAH. Uh, that's about 70 miles, 80 minute drive from the port of Galveston. Or you can go to the William Hobby Airport, H O U. It's about 40 miles, 50 minute drive. So um, you can't, there are transfers that you can take. Uh, Disney Cruise Line uh, will, does have hotels at both airports, and you can get transfers from those airports to the port. They'll take you down the morning of, of your uh, cruise. Um, and those are the Houston Airport uh, in at the George Bush Intercontinental, and I forget what the other one is. They also have a hotel that's actually down in Galveston, so you can stay in Galveston if you want. Uh, they do not provide transportation down there for that, um, but and then it's easy to get. It's very close to the uh, to the port, so. Um, it, it is a it is a different the one thing that I've heard a lot uh, from people who sail out of Galveston a lot is it gets fog so sometimes you know uh, particularly when you're coming back to Galveston just don't put your flight too too early because sometimes they they can't always uh, get into port as early as they had hoped because there's fog so just be aware of that um, give yourself a little bit of flexibility um, but there's it's it's supposedly a great place to sail out of so I I would like to do that sometime it's on it's on my list that in San Diego I really want to sail out of San Diego so yeah that's a, that's on my list too actually I asked about it in our meeting the other day where I was like what about West Coast cruises. You know, what's it like sailing out of there? And I, I've always wanted to – I always used to think – I'm an idiot because I'm map challenged um, – is uh, is I didn't realize that San Diego is like an hour and a half from Anaheim. I thought it was like six hours away because I can't look at a map correctly. <laughs> um, and so I was like, I can't believe how many times I've gone to Disneyland that I've never taken the drive down to San Diego. And then knowing they sail out of there too is – 
really interesting. So I'm like, oh, I want to know what a West Coast vacation kind of looks and like. And they do a lot of, they do different links, but they do a lot of like really short ones out of San Diego yep. too, like two, three, four night ones. So it's really easy to do that combined vacation with Disneyland. Awesome. And it will be interesting. It, on an earlier show, we were talking about the new ships. It would be really here, of course, in Orlando, they make a real link between doing a land sea tour. Mm -hmm. um, they don't do that as much out of Disneyland. Right. And I'm wondering whether one of the new ships might actually be in San Diego all the time. Mm -hmm. And you'll, you can do like spend a week at Disney, a Disney week, and do a couple days at land and then a couple days cruise. That would be really awesome. But right. we'll see what happens. I, I hope that they do kind of make one permanently like in that area. Um, you know, the wonder is over there for a little bit, but then it goes other places. I will tell you, I, I sailed last week um, to Alaska actually out of Seattle. That was fantastic. Like, Wait, oh, you, it, 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 the port was out of Seattle and not yeah. um Oh, it was not a Disney cruise. It was cruise, not a Disney cruise line cruise. Yeah. Oh, it was okay. A, it was a rock crap band. Oh. So. Oh. Yes. <laughs> um, listen, when we, when because Elaine was on that cruise, I've said it on the show before, um, the one Alaska cruise I've done, which was a Disney Cruise Line one that sailed out of Vancouver. Vancouver, Vancouver beautiful city. Yes. But I, my connecting flight was in Seattle, so mm -hmm. I decided that I was going to fly into Seattle the day before and then connect with everybody at the airport the next day because it was the same series of flights throughout the week. Um, and the one night I spent in Seattle was fantastic. Yes. And I want to go back so bad. And that's the thing is I was like, I feel like it opens an opportunity to preview these cities that you're going out of. So sailing out of Seattle actually you sounds get to awesome. Visit. I had never been to Vancouver. I had never been yeah. to Seattle. Like, go in a couple days early. We actually, we came in the day before, but then we actually stayed um, two days after the cruise. Lovely. And I mean... There's so much to do, and it's exploring new cities. I want to go to a baseball game. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's true. I, I, my thing is, like, if I'm ever in a city with a baseball stadium, I want to go to the baseball really? game. Yeah, and I, I did not know that you that you I know, were a baseball I, person. I know, I know. I have Nobody no idea. does. <laughs> um, so I, I, well, the thing is, is uh, the hotel I had booked for myself, which was a pretty nice hotel. Um, like when I got there, it wasn't like, oh, she's boozy. I just picked a random one out of like Travelocity or something like that, um, which I I don't know why. But uh, it was literally like my window was facing into the stadium and oh, I was wow. there. I was there on like a Thursday and there was a game on a Wednesday and a Friday. Oh, and like, oh man. Wah, wah, wah. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, oh, man. But no, the cruise was incredible. Just while we're talking about other places, um, one of the questions, uh, oh, Nancy asked, uh, when is – uh, Disney Cruise Line going to sail out of New York again, um, and it's it's such an interesting. Qu they they haven't for a couple seasons, right? They they used to add. They did have last a, year. Uh, did they last year? Yeah, last fall. Um, so they usually do when they're coming back from Europe, and then they in the fall they'll go up the coast into New England, and you can do leaf peeping and stuff, or or they go out to the Bahamas. Um, uh, not Bahamas, sorry, Bermuda. Bermuda is what I meant to say. The other. B island. Um, and What'd you call me? Yeah, Just not a, a B island. <laughs> yeah. Um, but they haven't done there. There's nothing on the on any of the schedules right now for New York. And so it's a question that we get asked a lot because I know a lot of folks in the New Northeast would like to just be able to drive straight to New York and and leave from there. And I've always wanted to leave from New York Harbor. I think that'd be really cool to go and see the Statue of Liberty as you sail away. Um, but nothing on the agenda yet. We'll so, let you know. Yeah. The, the, the answer to that question is they're not. They have actually removed New York as one of their listed ports. Oh, bummer. Um, along with Miami. So they're not. <laughs> Maybe when we get these uh, new, sh new ships coming, they'll come back to New York. But for now, they're not. And my sense always is that Disney, like Disney has removed um, Key West. It no longer stops down there on... Uh, a, they're listening to a lot of jurisdictions that say, we don't want cruise ships. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, New York has said that. Key West has said that. So my sense is they're trying to listen to the local communities a little bit. Um, but who knows? Um, yeah. it's if you want to go to Greece and you want to go to Greece on a cruise, you better 
like go now because okay. they're pulling out of Greece. If there is a there's a tiny slight ta- tangent I'm going to take right here. There is an animated show that is made by the same people who made Bob's Burgers called The Great North, mm-hmm. and the show takes place in Alaska. And there was actually a really really funny episode in the fourth season. I think it was the fourth season. It might have been the end of the third season, but because um, I've just been like binging it and. Um, I didn't realize a lot of the stuff on the show they talk about is true, like the fat bear contests and stuff like that, because there's an episode about that. But there's a really good one about cruise ships coming into port and how much the guy who's a local hates them, but the town loves them. And it's a back and forth. And I was like, oh, my God, we were those people on the cruise ship. <laughs> <laughs> I know. So it's really good. If you're out there watching it and you've ever like <laughs> sailed on a thing like that, I think it's a really funny episode to watch. But yeah. um, okay, okay. T- Elaine, what, else, what do we got next? All right. So Lauren asks. I know all ships um, in Disney Cruise Line are family friendly, but which ship do you think has the most to offer oh for God. toddlers? Chloe, your mm. hand went up. I don't have a toddler yet. Maybe one day we'll see. Um, but you're not from... going to make an announcement here. <laughs> no, <laughs> oh. <laughs> not not right now. No. <laughs> um, but being on all of the ships, I can confidently tell you my opinion is the Wish. Um, hmm. I feel like the kids, uh, the kids spaces and especially the it's a small world nursery is obviously the latest and greatest on the Disney wish. Um, there's the slide down from the grand hall down into the, um, kids those club. kids clubs yep. that you can, uh, go down with your child. If right you're a the, parent the of the a grand toddler, hall. Right from the grand so hall. wish I could shrink myself. I, I know. Do that and so the badly. grand hall, I feel like is made for little kids. Like it feels like you're in a, a giant play set in that area when, especially when there's characters and, you know, activities in there. Um, but also the pool deck up above how they have the cascading different pools, family pools. Um, there's like a little shallow kitty pool as well. So I feel like that's made for toddlers. There's the toy story, you know, outside outdoor uh, water playground on the top deck as well. I just feel like that entire ship, uh, the layout of it all is very family friendly for for toddlers to roam around in too. Like even the um, the Tiana's uh, Bayou Lounge. Forgive me, I, I feel like I'm saying the name wrong, but <laughs> that is open during the day and it's out in the open between all the shopping and everything, and people can even sit in there and. Kids can yeah. go and explore all these spaces that typically might have been blocked off on all the other ships. So there's a lot more space for littles to roam. So my vote is for the Disney Wish. I'd no also push. like to point out that you said you do not have a toddler. But if you are watching this on <laughs> YouTube, if you look just behind her shoulder. <laughs> I am a toddler. She, in fact, does have a toddler. And that would be <laughs> Animal from the Muppets. Um, <laughs> sticking out of her. Yeah, little baby animal <laughs> from the thing. So. And even Miss Piggy up there. she's oh, she, She's got her children. She's Don't got her Muppet her. Yeah, right. She's got children. You know, yes. Chloe before she worked here was actually Nana from the Muppet Babies. You may recognize her from the, <laughs> from the, the striped down. socks. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'll take it. I'll when take I it. saw this question on the uh, on, on the Facebook page, uh, that was my first thing, and I think the the Disney Wish is awesome, and the kids clubs are are awesome. One of the challenges you have is that little kids, if you're not potty trained. You can't go in the pools. It's a federal rule. You can't. So all the pool stuff is not available. And so my answer was the Disney Fantasy because the Fantasy not only has the little splash pad that's uh, focused on that's designed themed around um, Finding Nemo, but it also has a whole nother splash pad underneath the aqueduct where mm-hmm. kids can toss stuff or, you know, there's water spraying around. There's a similar one on the Disney, Disney Wonder. Um, and, and it's a great place for that outside time um, and to be able to run around and splash and play and do all those kinds of fun things without having to be in the pool. So that was the one that I, I suggested. I also think that the um, animator's palette with both, if you're doing a longer cruise, you get both uh, crush turtle talk with crush you also get to draw and and the th- things come alive is a little bit more family friendly particularly for the little ones who may not fully be into marvel yet that may be a little outside of uh, outside of their realm right now so so that was what uh, what i came up with do you have what's, what I, were your thoughts i don't have a lot to add um onto that i agree with both of you i Happen to personally know Lauren. I know that she um, did recently sell last month on the Wish, and 
took her son, who is now one, on his very first cruise, and he Aww. had an amazing time, she said. So, <laughs> um, so I know that they had a great time on The Wish with a one-year-old, good, and good. it worked out really, really, really well. So that is something for her to look at. The fantasy or the dream would be on the next the next one which I agree I agree with that I don't know as far as I would say if you're looking at the magic and the wonder it would be more if you have a toddler that maybe they get overstimulated super easy and you need more of a space that is less people a little bit calmer that yep. kind of thing then you might look at one of those smaller ships mm. if that's the kind of toddler that you have um, that they get overstimulated easily. So, yeah, that's what I would think. Cool. Okay, so do you have anything to add, Rona? No, I don't have okay. children, nor do I plan to. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we are sailing right along to our next question from Karen, and she is going to be flying in from the U.K., and she's going to be selling right over, to, over to pond, isn't it? Over to oh, pond. God, I hate myself. Okay, sorry. <laughs> she will be sailing from Fort Lauderdale. So she's trying to figure out the whole transfer situation and wondering if um, taking the Brightline train back to Orlando is easy to do, or is it just would it be just easier for her to fly into the Miami airport? Um, and what does Disney offer as far as transportation? Um, so here's the thing. Disney does not offer transportation from the Orlando airport to Fort Lauderdale. Because you're talking about, it's like three, three and a half hours away. So if you are trying to make things easier as far as being right there, you're going to want to fly into Miami, you're going to want to fly into Fort Lauderdale. And they would offer transfers between the port and the airport. Um, just like all of the other ports, they do offer hotel options. Um, and I have not taken the Bright Line, but I do know that several members um, of our company You've been and our contact point? team I have done it. Yeah. So you did it? Mm -hmm. Okay. I have. So tell us your Oh, experience. yeah. I forgot. You went. You did the Fort Lauderdale one, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. What was From that like? From MCO, so the Orlando Airport. It is extremely easy. I was surprised how easy the entire process is from security to waiting for the train to boarding the train to being on the train. Um, Chloe, can I ask you a quick off. question about security? Because yeah. I, I didn't even think yeah. about it like that. Does it work like when you go through an airport? Is it like that similar type way of security? Way more streamlined, way, way easier. Okay. Like I I was expecting it to be at the level of I didn't even think of it. That's airport. right. Until you just said yeah, it. Yeah, they just have you put your suitcase through in um a conveyor belt and oh, you well. go through a metal That's detector, great. you walk through a metal detector, and then I was okay. I was done. I That's had cool. like How? jewelry makeup, bunch of stuff in there and they didn't stop me. So now I understand like you weren't necessarily getting off a plane and getting on the train and going to the port, but how how somebody that would be flying in, because mm -hmm. coming from the UK, it may just be easier for her to go into Orlando. She's gonna have more options. Yeah. yeah. That kind of thing. So how easy is it that she's gonna get off the plane mm -hmm. onto the train? Like what is that? It's Look it's like. within the same vicinity. Like it's it's still part of MCO proper, but I I personally don't have experience of where you need to go once you land okay. at MCO. Wait, there should be a pathway. I'm terminal sure. Terminal C is where the train station is. Right. 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 Wait. Wait. And there's a for real. I didn't know this. The is I that thought, MCO? I had no idea where the terminal station was. It is. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. It's a brand new building. Yeah. Okay, that's fascinating it's, to me. Yeah. I mean, it's adjacent to Terminal yeah. C, which is the newest uh, terminal. The terminal is a little bit of a distance from Terminal A B. They have a uh, one of their auto whatever they people mover trains yeah. mm -hmm. that goes from A B, in, and it's right near A is where you find it. Um, and you can take it over to Terminal C, and it drops you. It will drop you right where the train is. Yeah. Um, so I think most of the f uh, uh, international flights are coming in and yeah. out of Terminal yes. C anyway. Yeah. So you'd be right there to, mm -hmm. to go to the train station. The entire process, though, is a lot easier than I expected. Mm -hmm. um, there's only really one platform to board. So everybody's waiting in the same area. There's a restaurant, there's a bar and a lounge. Um, so it's a really relaxing environment. And then they make an overhead announcement that you can take the elevator down to start boarding the train. And then you get in your according car to your ticket and then find your seat and how long was the train ride 
it was about three hours, mm-hmm. I want to say, from MCO down to Fort Lauderdale. And then once I got off in Fort Lauderdale, I lifted over to the nearby hotel that was basically next to the port, the Disney Cruise Line port. Um, and that was like a five minute. Oh, that close. OK. Eight minute lift. It was later at night. But yeah, you just take 95 down to the hotel. And the train had food and drink options, too, right? It did. Yes. Yeah. yeah. See, because I, I feel and like snacks. that's important when you're <laughs> going, you know, traveling a lot. Yeah, and, it's and it's like, a really smooth ride. Eat? It was really enjoyable. I, it was I loved it. I can always do it again. Every person that I have talked to has echoed exactly what Chloe yeah. said and that they have I mean, they have desks like you're sitting with mm-hmm. like Wi-Fi a desk service. Right there, so Plenty you can of plug legroom. in your laptop and sit there and work. You can charge your phone. Like every person that I've talked to, really, really, really likes it. And there is a trick because sometimes it can be a little, a little pricey. Um, if you sign up for their email newsletters, just keep watching because they send out like half off discount codes and that kind of thing all the time. Yeah. So if this is something you're looking at, just go ahead and sign up for their newsletter. And then once you've got your flight books and you see a discount come through, then book it. Awesome. Cool. And Karen, you can also fly into Miami Airport, and it's an hour away from uh, Fort Lauderdale. And uh, I don't know when I'm on one of those longer flights, I don't want to then get on a three hour train. Um, I would like to just crash in a hotel. You could do that right into Miami and go up the next day, and it's literally only an hour away, so it's not bad. Well, I think those have been some great questions, but I also think um, we're going to split this and do another Q and A episode as oh. well because there's been there, there's been a lot of really good conversation. I think I hope this has been really informative for people and helpful in that travel planning. And we've got a ton more that we're going to answer, so stay tuned for another question and answer show. Um, I can't wait to take over. The I show am again. nervous <laughs> about it. <laughs> I can see the mostly because the captain Elaine (laughs) said we're going to do another one. I can see the thirst in your eyes for that power, and it is unsettling. So uh, I'm going to attempt to bring the ship to shore. (laughs) Say thank you uh, to everybody uh, who submitted some questions. Thank you to Elaine for gathering those for us, and all of you guys for having this uh, conversation as well. If you are, uh, thank you to the internet, obviously, for consuming this content. So if you're watching this on YouTube, please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Leave us some comments um, with some future topics, future questions, things like that. We have uh, lots of stuff here on this channel as well that we discuss Disney travel. We discuss Universal travel, cruise line, all that sort of stuff. So um, if you are one of our listeners out there, please feel free to rate and review this podcast whenever you have that opportunity. And don't forget about Dreams Unlimited Travel when booking your next vacation. DreamsUnlimitedTravel.com for a free, no-obligation quote today. And with that, bon voyage, everyone. <laughs>